You got seen one? I, I, I yes, my true purpose of this visit has been uh, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Especially one that was recording. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Still going strong. Alright, you need to tweet about that. I don't know if tweet is the right word for that. I like scream right Yeah. Now. I'll pull pulls from the cool action. <laughs> That's a hell of a military command. <laughs> Yeah, you just activated something. <laughs> activated me, Joel. Okay, so as far as I can tell, this doesn't actually snap anywhere. It just like kind of slides off. Which one? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like it looks like it's mostly just like the tension of this is holding it on more than anything. Yeah, I'm gonna get some the fluid so I've got it. And I'm assuming there's something that's going to be going on over it that will hold it in place too. Yeah. So for now it's just kind of holding the piping together. That's the same one I I put this one on back with actually myself. Because I'm going to do it. Might be my time to make some crow. Or pull. Nope, that's correct. Okay, I'm no, the best. no, 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 Slang. <laughs> well, because of Matt. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. because of Matt, and just because I find that to be an incredibly, like, like fun turn of phrase. Fun turn of phrase, but also it's, it's just it's that context of Matt of Walking Fang Boo Boo Doll. Like. Well, and I like the context for it is a, um, what a unpunctuated tweet. Yep. So what they were trying to say didn't really completely come across. Yeah. Because I I remember somebody like pulled up the tweet and, and they were just uh, like, oh, tried to point out that you know they're probably trying to say, you know, it's boo boo dog. Yeah. And I'm like, nope, there was no comma there, and boo boo dog is more delightful. So I refuse that interpretation. <laughs> Between nine and thirty. I'm genuinely glad you got sick of the calls. I am too. Too bad for Tyler. Because <laughs> they will never be seen again. Nope. Made a special appearance just for you. It depends. Something about the game is jealous. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm the person who gets excited when you see the rabbit in the backyard. Oh, I mean, same. So, like, yeah. The, the fact that it's an exotic bird is just icing on the cake. Right. Actually, um, I, I get excited every time my downstairs neighbors, um, like the ones who live on the first floor by the yeah. parking lot, um, whenever they're, they've got their like, patio door open, so it's just a screen. Right. And the cat is hanging out like, in front of the street <laughs> door just watching out stuff outside. So I get to see the kid. Yeah. No, I get excited whenever I see cats around the neighborhood. See, I don't as much when I'm visiting my parents, because those are stray cats. Right. And they're more problem than anything. Right. Um, this is kind of a it's kind of a serious problem in my hometown. Oh I bet, yeah. Um I'll it's like kind of vacuum on the kitties. Well, I don't like kitties in a vacuum, that'd be a very bad place to say. Hey, don't don't put kitties in the vacuum. There's one thing you can get away from them. Julie makes great, don't put kitties in the vacuum. Also, take away from Digimon. <laughs> um, I, looks like we need A. Yep, yeah, I'll pass it over. Sorry, I'm gonna get my head. No, 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 it's fine. I got struck by the calls. Okay, we, we've, got, we've all been there, let's... Yeah, come on, like... It's a very relatable problem. A12. I just can't get this piece over the actual peg itself. I was having that same problem for the longest time. Any tips and tricks and pro strats you can offer? Um, kind of just keep pushing. <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, actually, that one says. A twelve. I probably need to be thirteen. A 
because that is what symmetry would dictate. <laughs> I do love that in the background of like um, different streams and game and like recording be done as a network. Like with Ashley, you know the train nearby her house. Okay. With yeah. Molly, they use like sirens or like a motorcycle. No, me, there's the macaws. <laughs> right, all just perfectly ordinary like yeah things that you run into right in your day to day. Just the macaws. I'm just going to be for a second to grab this piece off. Oh, okay. Jesus. That's right. <laughs> Famous <laughs> last words there. Well, technically, I think that's a laugh. <laughs> no, I mean, like, like literally, I'm, I'm trying to gauge if this is correct based on the fact that my arm is the opposite one of the one that's on the yeah. listing. <laughs> I'm gonna hand you a bag actually just Jeez. for so I hear Thank you very much. Another one of trying to guess at the uh, equivalent. Right. <laughs> it's one, two, and four, which might actually be symmetrical. I figure it should be easy to tell because if there's two identical sets. Exactly. <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. One and two are. Steps four is the piece I need, only I'm pretty sure I need three. Yeah, like I said, I don't think it really snaps anywhere. You just have to get kind of down there. Yeah. Oh, you're here. Yes, it's cool. High stakes drama. High stakes drama on the uh, stream. Fuck! I actually did it. <laughs> uh oh. What's wrong? <laughs> no, I put this piece on the wrong way. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's a very easy fix. But it just means they need to get this. Oh, they this actually part. helpfully like show you which way. Oh it's yeah, going. no, I I must have had it the other way around. Sure, sure. It's just like that just me being an idiot. That's fine. I I can relate. Really, I've made those mistakes on this already. Also, just in my day to day life on a regular <laughs> basis. Same. Move. I got it. Yeah. No way. Yeah. I just about stepped on this uh, landmine. Uh, oh, yeah, no, don't, don't, don't. Monty, Monty left uh, oh, under my feet. No, oh, God, no. Don't know. Please save us. I'm not gonna, I'm, don't worry, I'm not gonna let that son of a bitch win. <laughs> Hush, but like, I get what you're saying. <laughs> Oh, the heads. I fucking hate the heads. I think I'm cutting out that piece of me. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. So, actually, kind of unsure what the. 
So if it says E15 and E16 for that, but there's only one E15 and 16. Or is E1 the one that has two? Yeah. Others? Do we have separate E's? Okay, cool. No, no, I've, I've got them. Oh, you've got them. Okay. No, I've got them on here. I was just worried that it was a symmetry thing. Okay, gotcha. No, it's like these are identical. I wanted to make sure I wasn't using something that was for your. <laughs> Not so good. Off the, uh, the instructions I was trying to read. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Okay, that's backwards, or else this thing is weirdly double jointed. Uh, it, it, yeah, just, just follow the instructions. You know, with the hands, you just have to trust the instructions. No, no, I was which which direction the finger went on. Oh, so yeah, no, yeah, it was very, it was very obvious it was the wrong way because okay. it was bending. But <laughs> I was just allowing for the possibility that it was a genetic anomaly. Genetic anomalies in, yeah, machinery. Right. That's what I said. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah, that. I dropped a white piece onto a white top. Yep, that, that'll be fun. Okay. Oh. Oh, this is the only thing I just to show Molly, which is you just have to literally put your glue to the floor so that way you can see any discrepancies. Yeah, in the right. Floor. There we go. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Oh, god damn it. So... Now, literally, next week, you're getting a bit more of a pure, actual, like, experience here, folks, because this is what I'm actually more like when I'm building up. It's very <laughs> messy, just, like, all over the place. Yeah, I did like that when I, um, set up for the kit, um, you uh, brought for me for uh, Gunplug Club. Yeah. And I started laying out all of my uh, uh, all my runners yeah. and like lying out for and you were just like, wow, you are way more organized at this. Yeah. Alright, so what that one? I've got a very good at closing my eyes quickly. Oh. Yeah, I've got that instinct too from my uh, use of Lego. It's like, aha! Boy, is that a talent to try and uh, bring somewhere else? Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm assuming there's decals for its knuckles ta knuckle tattoos. Oh, only, John. Oh, only. A knuckles tattoo is a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the physics of when you cut a piece off. Like, yeah, and it just goes flying. Yeah. Like, there's a, there's a really good, like, stored energy, like, physics to that, yeah. Oh, man, just imagine a gambit with, but with gun pop pops. That would be just shrapnel. Right? That'd just be grape shot. Yeah. Oh, man, if you get the wrong fingers for these, you could make a really freaky looking thing. Oh, yeah. Like, imagine, like, it looks like I could slot in the other ones and just have the fingers pointing the wrong way if I really oh. wanted to, like, if I really wanted to fuck with you, because you have to live with this thing. You asked. I feel this. I didn't. I'll point out. Hypothetical bad enough. Yeah, I did appreciate my best friend having trouble with like, the finger of Jake into doing that of his own call without realizing what he was doing. Which one did you put in? D twelve or uh, eleven? So I grabbed eleven and five, I think. Oh, 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 oh six. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I guess it's a choose. It's choose. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. It's, yeah. Are, you, are you gonna be fists or arms? Um, what are you doing? I'm fine either. Cause I feel like we should have one of each. Mm, that's gonna look weird though. I know. That's what I want. Well, I'll tell you what I want. Okay, fine. I'm doing a fist then. Okay. So you pick whatever you want it to be. Okay. Sorry, I should have put this alone out. I guess. No, that's, that's fine, I was gonna do the angle, because, you know... Right, and then you can repose it later if you want exactly. to have it be a slappy robot instead of a punchy one. I, I usually have it be more, like, dramatic flare robot. Like Tuxedo Mask, even, you know, Tuxedo Mask is actually useful and good. So, you know, nothing like Tuxedo Mask at all. Well, that's fair. Give 
making the word common a bad name. Right? God. Boy, this thumb is way too ambulatory. Look at that. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Look at that. That thing is double jointed. <laughs> I'll show up on camera. Let's pop those in. There's a really good um bit. Someone did a, a ed food editing of um. There's a comrade like manga, right? Uh, by the actual creator of comrade, and there's a moment where, like it's comrade like holding um like the love interest while like a shiny light's coming down on him, and they replace all the speech and bubbles with, "I want to live like common people." <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> just really, just the just the opening lyrics or like opening chorus of that song, like. <laughs> All right, um, we just got to do these shoulders now, and then we got to build the torso to attach these things. Cause that'd be useful. Uh, yeah, we. I think we made this joke last time, but we can't reverse Rain Man in this. It just doesn't work physically. No. Uh, so we start with there. So 34, 35, pin. Again, just playing with you know, mild obsessive tendencies. Right. Actually, I'll wait till the pull, wait till we get to the pull torso because again, that's like a one person operation. So I'll wait till right. wait till then to pull up another question. Yeah, actually, genuinely, I'm curious how they like decide where to put pieces on the thing. Like, I assume there's a system for it for like maximizing your space or amount of plastic. Yeah. And but like just just the numbering and everything, like how none of it seems to actually follow a particular logical order. Like I'm just no. curious what does drive it. Yeah, I kinda wish they got a little bit into that meeting video. I'd love to see how it's made for like gun and right. Gun yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Yeah. I bet you there's a there's a guy whose job at Bandai is specifically he like goes into CAD and lays <laughs> out the um I can actually bring up it's a very frames for this. There's a very stylized video, but it's actually like it shows you the process of the factory. a lot of pieces like getting called out. Mm -hmm. So I like that it's a mix of J1 and J2 there. Well just again, J1 and J2. Well again it's, it's for symmetry. It's like right. one side, one right. Or one one side, one's the other. It's just unnecessary because they're all the same piece. Yeah exactly. So it's like cut this one from this from this runner but cut that one from that runner. And no, like just let me cut them all. <laughs> Can take that audio out in, in, in isolation. <laughs> See, I know you're too lazy to actually do that. Yeah. So, or too busy, maybe. I don't know. Bit of both. Bit of both. Yeah, it's just all 415 from one runner makes more sense. Yeah. No, I'm gonna give you two of these and you can give me two of yours so that we match instructions. No, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that at all. Well, so much for this being a cooperative effort. No, fuck that. This is Julie makes it great. I thought this one was specifically Julie and Joel makes it great. I mean, we could. <laughs> We've definitely referred to it as that. Shh. Fine. You know, it's becoming alarming to me how often you say that when things aren't fine. Things yet. probably are not fine. Yeah, well, that's what goes on. That's what goes on my hand. Just a mantra. Yeah. Yes. Actually, yes. 
is how I keep myself from having like usually in more serious situations anxiety attacks in like less serious situations just from like overanalyzing shit. Sure. See, I already don't believe my own bullshit, so I can't really <laughs> can't really talk myself out of those problems. <laughs> Well, good things in my head, I've got lol likes of like my boyfriend's voice and Zach's and like um, you know, Molly's voice and your voice like telling me like what will happen. Like, yeah, they, they tell me it's fine. Right. Yeah, we're good at that. It's a good support network we've built up. It really is. Unless you want to talk about egg timers and clocks. Yeah, unless unless you have something non-serious that's bothering you, in which case it is very much not a healthy environment. The fact that we've got some of the stuff split out and there's only certain pieces that we're both holding on to um, makes my normal, normal, my previous method of having them all arranged alphabetically less practical. Yep. Now you see. Well, if I was doing the solo, I can still do it. That's it's the fact that we're like some of the stuff is split. Yeah. Yeah, I might have to clean off my like kitchen table to actually finish. That <laughs> I look forward to that uh, video. Oh, I'm I'm filming it, am I? Well, I mean, if you want. I'm just saying, I'd enjoy that. <laughs> just, br just bring, um, TWA Zach on. I'll go, okay, I'll just do that while he's playing Persona. Yeah! Considering, considering he doesn't actually wait for the, like, <laughs> Skype delay before making decisions anyway, it wouldn't actually change anything. He's throwing shade from one recording to another. He's probably not gonna watch this. <laughs> just in case. Hi, Zach. And I mean, this, it's not like this isn't criticism I have levied to him on air. Oh, of course. And I love how he goes, oh, sorry, I'll be better about that. Mm. Mm -hmm. History shows otherwise, but... <laughs> and like, in his... In his defense, um... It's a fair reason, it's a fair, like, reason that when you, you play the, when you've played this game so much, you've built, like, an internal muscle it's, it's, so it's, it's not even that, it's the fact that there is a, um, like... Second ish delay sure. um, between my audio or between like something happening on screen, me seeing it and telling him to do something and him hearing it. Right. Which is very small in the grand scheme of um, like audio delays. Like, yeah. Like, that's, that's really impressive, but the problem is when we're trying to make decisions about, uh, you know, a thing that's happened. Yeah. Or is going to happen, like that's long enough that your you know, inclination to react to something has already like kicked in. Exactly, yeah. Well that's fucked now. Great. <laughs> I've genuinely enjoyed the stream though, especially uh that works here just because how much better it, you are than uh, with him um Regards to answering the enemy personas, like of course, I quizzes. Think the last one we recorded, I finally, um, I finally had a like losing streak. Oh really? Yeah, I think it's simply because I actually they, like they finally actually explained how it worked. So I tried to engage with it on their level, right? And that immediately fucked it up. Uh, it doesn't have it doesn't click in. Right? No, I'm just making sure I've got it lined up. Yeah, no, you can write your pants off the line. Yeah, well, it's all good. Cool. cool. Alright, it's time for the developers also. In which case, then I'll grab the questions. Yeah, no, if I don't actually think about it and just react to how the. Yeah, to what feels right. Exactly. In the moment, it's been spot on. This is, this is ridiculous. I should actually be the one pulling these up because you're the one who needs to be like building right now. No, it's fine. I can pull them up. Um, this one comes in from 
uh, at head B, uh, Simon Cole, uh, Cole Tucker. I apparently completely fucked up that name, I'm so sorry. Um, could full armor have more guns? And as you can see from, you know, the box and everything, it just, like, this freaking armor I'll show again for camera. So, there's so, two ways to approach that, the answer to that question. Right, okay. Um, just for the record, uh, let's actually go through. Oh, yeah, um, let's, let's, let's establish what the um, so specifications include. Yeah. Uh, twin beam rifle, rocket launcher, large beam gun, missile pod, backpack has six, the breast has 16, skirt has okay, 24, I've run, I've run out of fingers. <laughs> knee has 12, and then three beam sabers and four shields. Okay, there's a be beam saber in the ship. Beam sabers and shields are not guns. No, they're not guns. So, so the answer is. Directly then, yes, replace those things with more guard. Well, hold on, that is 30, uh, 36. That's 58 missiles, plus the large beam gun which on the shoulder, the twin beam rifle, and the rocket launcher. Okay, what, would you, like, what kind of guns would you replace the shield with? Um, I mean, I don't know guns, like... It, like, just... A general idea of guns, like you know, you've seen one like, that power higher. Great, great. <laughs> like I'm, a, I'm like the platonic opposite of a gun nut. I'm not saying, I'm not, but just saying, like from like laser gun, machine so, gun. Well, okay, so this this kind of leads into my other answer to this question, uh -huh. um, which is from a structural engineering perspective. Okay, sure. Um, and like obviously this. Well, this follows anime physics, so obviously whatever lo yeah. looks cool is what's designed and then they pretend it works. Right. But, <clears throat> just to be able to answer the question, we're going to pretend that the way it is now has been actually engineered to work sure. physically within the, the environment it's built for. Yeah. Um, and that if we were to make any changes to it, we have to keep that in mind. Right. So, um... Assuming that the artillery it has right now is designed in such a way that the weight is distributed in a way that it can maneuver properly, yeah. and that firing certain ones will not completely like ruin it. Yeah. Um. So, for instance, putting a like heavy artillery weapon of some sort in place of one of the shields mm -hmm. might completely throw off the like balance of yeah. the unit, and firing it may like the thrusters may not. The way they're set up right now may not be able to compensate for the recoil action of firing that weapon. Yeah, okay. So I would probably go with something like a laser that's going to have less of a physical Actual impact when it fires. And also like less kinetic recoil necessarily. Yep. If we could somehow, like, instead of firing like even energy weapons, just open up a portal to a punch dimension. Oh, okay. And fire a weaponry that way just to completely avoid any recoil issues. That would be ideal. That would be useful. Straight up point of you know. Oh, from an engineering standpoint, straight to punch dimension. Well, I mean, that's that's just science. Look, Reed Richards has delved into all sorts of alternate dimensions, and he is the most science scientist science or man who has ever scienced. Yeah. Anyway, for anyone who doesn't know, the punch dimension is. Uh, is a, basically a no prize answer for why Cyclops can fire lasers from his eyes without actually getting like kicked back from the force of it. And the answer is he doesn't actually fire lasers. His eyes are a conduit to a place called the punch dimension, where an energy is just coming out of it. It's also why they. It's also why instead of burning through things, they just push things back. It's yeah. Kinetic energy. It's not actually uh, like a laser. See, I don't mind that it's actually kinetic energy. Like that's fine. But also, here's an answer that's just fucking. He just braces impact. Like, just braces for the impact. It's not. Okay, but the physics of that impact, there's no way a, a, a person, like, yes, he's a mutant, but he has no mutant super strength. Well, we don't know that, like, there isn't an, some apparent amount of strength that comes with your mean X gene. So you're saying specifically his eye muscles are so powerful that they alone can absorb the brunt of that impact. I was gonna say more that mutants in general are a bit stronger than and more resilient than most other human beings, but we can go with that as well. Um, if you actually look at a slow mo like X-ray of his eyes, you can see them contract with the amount of pressure 
that they are absorbing and flatten into basically a like two-dimensional object and then spring forward again. Why didn't the Magic School Bus have a crossover with the X-Men and just throw it inside that body's head a little bit? In a space style. Man, I want to hear Miss Frizzle like teaching kids about the X gene. Yeah. Okay, so the answer so the answer is yes, it can have more guns, but you have to be careful about what kind of guns. Yeah, no, you, you gotta consider that shit. Like, come on. Or alternatively, yes, it can have more guns, but it also needs more thrusters to compensate. Right. At which case I will like wrap around to my um you have to be careful side of the answer because I feel like there is probably a point of no return where I mean you can't just keep adding guns and thrusters in equal ratio in forever. Eventually you hit a point of critical mass, in which case in which like the combined weight of the guns and the thrusters will just crush the unit and it will basically implode on itself. Oh you actually you actually like this gun this gun series because they get some like real heavy bullshit in regards to that. But not on any technical level. But through just sheer imagery of the battles. Um, heavy Bullshit is going to be the name of one of the guns I replace the shields with. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, there's just like, in the final battle between these guys, so basically there is the Psycho Zaku, which is just a red Zaku with a huge fuel tank bigger than it. Sure. Which actually, it self-loads its space RPGs and hence and space machine guns. That feels appropriately psycho. Yep. Um, that, that's kind of a funny thing that, you know, anything psych psychology related to in anime is referred to as psycho, because that's a fun, like, that's a weird, like, cultural barrier of language in Japan. I don't know, America had the psycho rangers. No, but like, is it, okay, so psycho in America is very much like, um, a derogatory term. Right. In Japan, it's more just anything referred, referring to psychology. Referring to mental state. Okay, but what about psycho mantis? That's also from Japanese. It's Metal Gear Solid. Right, but he's actually like. But, he, but he's, he's like actually insane. No, but he's also a psychic. Right, but he's a crazy guy. Well, no, but also consider like other series like Psychopaths are about like examining the human mind and everything. There is a slight like antagonistic edge to the word, even in anime and stuff, but. It's still used, like, um, what you call it, uh, Unicorn Gundam, when it turns from a regular robot to, like, a big Gundam with, like, red parts inside, that's called the Psycho Frame. Right, well, I mean, to be, to be fair, Psycho just by itself is derogatory, but English still uses that word in that sense, because Psycho analyze Yeah, exactly, psycho, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is just funny when a robot has a Psycho Frame. Right. Um, well, I mean, even by that definition, it's still a bad shit. Oh, like yeah! Concept. Oh, God, the Psycho Frames. Um, but yeah, so Psycho Zaku is facing up against, um, uh, with, uh, full armor Gundam here. And basically, there are points when, because they have so many thrusts attached to each of these Gundams, anytime they hit, they just go rocketing off. And it's, like, actually an issue. They have to deal with these fact that these things are super big, heavy robots that are traveling at such high speeds, but at the same time, they're just, like, Explosions ready to happen. Right. Which describes most spacecrafts, to be honest. Yeah, no, definitely. Rocket fuel is very flammable. Who would have known? Everyone has heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it turns out that's one of those things that you'd be hard pressed to find somebody <laughs> who didn't. Uh, Dr. Nick might have been the last person to figure that out. <laughs> and that is just a language problem. <laughs> yeah, it's just the limitations of English. Or our weird tendency to, like, have multiple ways of saying the same thing. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay, just because I'm curious. Oh no. I don't like this, I can't, I'm not looking at what you're doing right now. Maybe I should be happy for that. Right, I'm not building this at the torso. See, this isn't this isn't the most unsettling. Put it back. <laughs> show it to the camera, then put it back. Show show the class what you did. <laughs> okay, so you know that episode of um, Arrested Development with Dan Castellaneta where he plays that that doctor who is oh, like of varying yeah. varying degrees of confident in himself. Yeah. Um, 
where he um has to he has to replace Joke's fingers and he swaps oh, them around yeah. so his middle finger is uh is uh, in place of his index finger and vice versa and yeah. it looks really unsettling. Yeah, just because like it doesn't look right. That's basically what I did to this boy. Whoa, that boy. He had an incredibly long pinky. That's fine. No, it's not. Jules, why why do you have to limit robots to the like specifics of our anatomy? Just think broader. Listen, we could have made them look like ants, but we made them look like us. Just, just keep but we that. could have made them look <laughs> slightly less like us. Yeah, but we did it! It's called the Uncanny Valley. And I don't want that! I don't, like, to be fair, that would be good for like a psychological warfare aspect. Which is basically, you know, big dog. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, Boston Dynamics is doing a real good job in the Uncanny Valley. Boston Dynamics is just like, mm, what if we just scared people to death? Well, no, Boston Dynamics was, what if we use pure engineering to design a thing? And they designed some very good things. The problem is, pure engineering does not care about aesthetics. <laughs> That's actually a part, uh, an important part of like edu engineering education. Oh yeah, is um, teaching people that they need to not only worry about the functionally best way to do something, mm -hmm. but also what's going to be appealing and easy to use. Yes, and that's that's often something that actually needs to be taught because the types of minds that really take easily to engineering tend to be the types of minds who don't necessarily think in the. I don't say they don't think in the same terms as other people because that sounds really like. The leadest almost. No, yeah. But they definitely um, do have a different approach to, so let's say, problem solving, yeah. which in turn influences how intuitive they find certain ways of interacting with things. Exactly, yeah. So it, you often run into the problem, especially with young engineers, where they design something that's incredibly like functional and um, easy to use for them, but as soon as um, uh, like a lay person gets their hands on it, they're very unsure of how to work with it because they just don't have the backing knowledge that it was built with. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes, too, they just don't worry about aesthetics and the visuals of it because their primary focus is that it works properly. Exactly. And from that perspective, you know, you kind of stop, especially when you're doing prototyping, you stop caring about how it looks because your prototypes are never going to look good. Yes. They're going to be, they're going to be ugly messes and so at some point you just kind of stop worrying about that, and that's a problem when it gets comes time to like make them for other people. Yeah, because like at early stage, like yeah, like fuck it, fuck the aesthetics. Like we just need to make this work first, and then we can like fix it later. But then yeah, at some point you have to go. Mm, now we should make this actually look, you know, decent. Or something like flying and snap that in. That's all good. Yeah, it's just a random piece of like, you know, cut away plastic. Sure. Um, yeah, so the, going back to Boston Dynamics, though, the reason specifically their stuff is such a nightmare to you all is because they're at, they're very much cutting edge in mm -hmm. like um, mechanics. Yeah, and so like they're designing um, devices that need to be able to like deal with conditions that machines are generally not very good at. Which I mean, the, the reason they move so uncannily is because they're based on like. Honestly, they, their movement is often very uh, insect-like, just on a much larger scale. Yeah. Just because insects are structured very similar to the types of machines they're building. And unfortunately, that like that style of movement, which the reason people find insects so unsettling is because they move in a very alien way to how most mammals move. And the, the reason for that is just a one of practicality. And for Boston Dynamics, what they're doing right now, that's the only way to make what they're making. I did appreciate the strut robot they made. <laughs> Fucking robot here to strut. I like, in like the broad sense of I found the videos enjoyable, um, the um, box moving robot that they made. Oh, that, where yeah. they were having to test its ability to deal with obstacles and. It's being like, like shut. Yeah. So, yeah, it was basically an extended video of engineers bullying this poor robot who would bend down to pick up a package, start going, and then they would, like, kick it over, and it would have to, like, Hey, nerd, nice box! Right, yeah, exactly. Like, it was it was incredibly humiliating if you anthropomorphize robots. You're going but, to the box, your mom! <laughs> but incredibly important, like, testing project. And I have to imagine that after a while, those engineers just felt like the biggest assholes of the world. Like, that is, that is seriously, like, 
put some green flickery filter over that and you can just go, this is from you know, the Nebuchadnezzar archives of how you know, our humanity <laughs> wide domains are over by the machines in the Matrix universe. Like, <laughs> just, ugh. Oh, that poor, poor bot. That reminded me of one of the things that uh, Chalk Tank had me on as a child, which was the Animatrix. Yes. There are some real disturbing uh, shots in that. Have you ever watched the Animatrix? I have not. <laughs> yeah, I see all those wheels turning. We should record something. We should record something. Um, the Animatrix is a hell of a thing because it actually shows you the first few episodes are called the Second Renaissance. Uh, Renaissance. Yep. And they're all about the lead up to. Uh, cul uh, culmination and uh, resolution of the actual machine revolution. Okay. Yeah, well, it's fucked up, Joel. It's really I, fucked up. I mean, I would imagine. I would kind of expect it to be. But, like, no, so much more than you actually, like, realize. Um, man, the Animatrix was seriously, like, did some really good universe uh, expanding and world building. Um, are you just gonna do, like, the... Uh, Grandpa dancing with- yep, 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 here we go, yep. <laughs> I, I can't actually, because if I do that too much, the legs just pop off. Okay, I kind of want to see Ch uh, Charlie Chapman dancing with uh, Grandpa legs. Like <laughs> Man, I wish I could raise my butt flaps like this on command. Like... Anyway. <laughs> So this is what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Tyler. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> really not. <laughs> Nothing else you're just gonna do it more now because you know what it feels like in Misery Loves Company. Yeah, and then I'm just like, hmm, I can create this feeling in someone else. This is great. This is power. Right, yeah, exactly like anyone who's been bullied. Yeah. <laughs> um have you actually read any of the Matrix comics? No. Okay, the Jan, genuinely very good. Like, um, good world building as well. Really, like, good moments that show you the actual philosophies that went into building the Matrix and, like, what that movie series and world is actually like. Um, like, the old, the Taoist, uh, philosophical story about a monk who goes to sleep and wakes up as a butterfly, and that whole thing. Oh, man. Well, let me go to sleep and wake up as a gun pop punk. <laughs> um, no, yeah, that, that genuinely, that series is pretty good. Um, there's a really good uh, bit in the com in one comics, because uh, the good thing I always like with the Matrix expanded like, materials is that they only do anthology stuff. Right. Which is exactly what you want. Right, yeah, no, exactly. Like, that. Honestly, the, my problem with the. Um, sequels, which aren't, I don't think they're complete, ter completely terrible. Like, I think there's, 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 there's some yeah. Um, I think if taken on their own, they're, they can be pretty enjoyable, just like dumb movies. Yeah. Um, Especially the second one. Right. But I felt like the story was trying to say, they said in the first one, and that it kind of cheapened it a bit to go back and add to it. Right, exactly. Um, and yeah, so like, I think continuing stuff in there, just being other stories about this very compelling universe. Makes perfect sense, and honestly, if they wanted to do more movies, that's what they should have done anyways, just tell additional stories, because what really captured people in that movie was the, like, world it had created. Just the aesthetic and everything, like, I honestly think that Neo should have become a background character for other characters to, like, play off of later on, as main characters. Like, right. I would have seen, like, because when they just show the other ship crews in those sequels, I actually want more stories about those ship crews. Exactly, like, yeah. Um... There's one really good uh, uh, story in one of the comics, which is uh, basically this one dude has entered like the you know red alert situation of oh while they were in the matrix their ship in the real world was attacked right and basically the ship has been down the machines aren't actively pursuing him but he's the only one of his crews left alive and he gets to a payphone and, and he calls like command and they basically go Where, where's the location and he looks around he's like in the middle of like you know um, the Midwest like. Close to the wall itself. Yep. And she's like, uh, I think, God, this was like a higher. And she's like, no, no, where are you? And he goes, oh, um, and he cuts back to him, his prone body in the ship to breathe over his legs. And just as he goes, I think we're like just underneath Tokyo. 
that we disconnect. Right. Oh, right. Where are you actually? Right. Yeah. Like, where? Yeah. Not where your consciousness is, but where's your body? Yeah. Like that was a really cool little moment, and that whole deal is that he actually ended up um, back in his hometown, and him wanting to bring someone back with him to the Matrix. Oh no. And yeah, there's actually also a whole good bit of um. They show in the animatrix there's a really nice way they get around it, like showing oh all these disparate art styles and like um, different uh, looks and aesthetics the matrix has. How do they explain that? And it's basically explaining where it's like every now and then there's just a big reboot to the world. Right, which is uh, yeah part of the fiction anyway. Uh, there's a great one which is uh, by the director of um, Cowboy Bebop, uh, Shinoshiro Watanabe, and it's just called Detective Story. And it's basically cyberpunk, like, straight up film noir, as in, oh, here's a rotary film, but the rotary is like a holographic hard light display. Sure. And like, it's a hard light typewriter and everything, and it's just this detective being asked to track down a hacker known as Trinity. Oh. Yeah. That name sounds familiar. Huh. Yeah. And there's actually like a whole really cool film noir storyline of him actually trying to find this major player in the, like, proper movies. This is book, they actually did get the um, actors to reprise their roles in the Animatrix as well. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that often would not necessarily be overlooked, but just not bothered with. Yeah. Because it's, it can be kind of expensive to get film actors to do just voice work. Yeah. Uh, compared to just hiring voice actors and the... Well, I mean, if you're going for a thing with a bunch of different styles anyways, you can pretty easily sell having other voices for characters. I, I, do, I do think it was... Good timing that um, around this time Matrix came out, anime was also becoming a bigger thing in the West. Right, yeah, so that was like, around the same time. Yeah, so it helps to have that. God, yeah, that that anthology like mini series, mini like movie, honestly was that further sold me on the So until you put this piece on, this looked a lot like a little shovel crap. It is. Is it? Yeah, uh, a lot of the uh, hero guns have what's called a core fighter, which basically is a little. Uh, yeah, you know, shuttlecraft that gets to, that turns into like the actual torso. Oh. Okay, so it's like the uh, saucer separation of the Enterprise D. Yes, I actually get that reference. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, or you can consider if you know the pterodactyls or did it actually something in the Megazord. <laughs> God, that's still my favorite piece of TWA fan on the Chelsea did going back to like the very beginning of TWA making fun of like. Kimberly just kicking back every time they're there. Man, so the um, like I think gush about the Raven Parker's comic a lot because it's a pretty well done comic. Yeah. Um, but one thing I really liked was in one of the early episodes they were fighting a monster with the swords and they had the individual swords and they didn't just form the Mega Zord in the comic, but they actually showed the like swords fighting the monster, holding their own until they yeah. needed it to up the ante. And it was just really cool to see like. Kim doing a straight run and like, oh, like the, mas the Mastodon doing like holding off the enemy and like just basically them all right, right. Yeah, seeing them all take their roles and that's one of the few things I felt for the brief period of time that they actually got to be orange in the movie. Yeah, um, it, that's it, one thing it actually did well was they gave each Zord the sense of a purpose. Yeah, and they definitely made it feel like everyone was finding a role to take in the. Fight. Also, that they had a very specific goal in mind that wasn't just beat the monster. Right. I did also like in the comic just when, oh, they're trying to capture the bridge and Carla from a kid just detaches and flies off. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Like, I wish there was, I mean, I get why they don't, that would cost money, but right. I wish there was more of that kind of thing in the show where, like, they yeah. actually would have used the pterodactyl sword as, like, a, like, an attachable flight unit. There is, uh, one of my favorite things in um, Go Busters, uh, the center that actually uses the phrase, you know, it's morphin' time. Right. Uh, that show actually has a lot of really genuinely good mech giant robot battles in that. Just because the whole um, conceit is that, so basically they're fighting off robot enemies that are coming from this mega world, essentially. Sure. Basically, like, the, the world, the parallel dimension of Pacific Point. Right. Yep. And uh, they always have a street level enemy they're fighting. But at the same time, they're dealing with the countdown of a giant robot version of an enemy that's going through land in the city. Right. So, so you almost exactly right. Just like a crew. No, yeah, straight up to the point, they actually have a countdown, and then when it actually appears, you actually get to have a street level fight happening parallel to the oh, actual, that's like, pretty cool. the big Zord fight in, in the background, which is really good. And 
it makes sense because all of their um, uh, all of their robots uh, actually have more not humanoid forms all the time, but like one of them is based on a gorilla that turns into a uh, semi truck. Oh, so it's, it's Optimus easy. Prime and Optimus Prime on one. It actually is, yeah. Which um, I guess is just Optimal Optimus. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the, um, he gets to hold off his own and such. And then the uh, Yellow Ranger, her, hers is an attack helicopter that gets that gets to turn into a giant rabbit. Just actually, like, it's I showed that to Mike before. He's like, "Why has no one told me about this?" <laughs> that's that's pretty good. And um, yeah, the funny thing is that you know the Red Ranger because he's the hero, he's the cheetah, which turns into a car, which also basically, just basically turns into a gun. Sure. And so it's, they do some really cool bits of like while the Yellow and Blue Ranger are fighting the street, I mean the Red Ranger is in the actual like big mech fight. Right. Off his own. Which is pretty typical for Red Rangers and like Sentai stuff anyway. But they actually do a cool thing later on, which um they didn't do as much as the show goes on because it actually makes sense when I explain it. Uh they don't actually combine for like the first six or so episodes. Oh, okay. Because it turns out because um Go Busters is actually about like basically a paramilitary as okay. uh, aspect of them. And uh, they actually reveal that to actually combine is a whole coordinated procedure that actually needs to be pulled off perfectly. Right, yeah, that makes sense. And so they actually do need to pull off, and when they do pull off in the episode, for the next few episodes they do still have to like make sure everything's done really like tightly and succinctly. Right. And it's just like actually transforming a like complex like um like masterpiece level uh, transformer, <laughs> where the first couple times you, you are meticulously watching the instructions and yeah, makes sure stuff lined up and stuff because it's complicated. Yeah, but if you do it enough, eventually you get used to it. Exactly, and just yeah, like to have that time as time goes on, like they don't need to do that anymore because they're better at it. I feel like so like a common complaint that's come up on Teenagers Attitude is that the Zord fights in particular. Stop being cool. Well, not necessarily stop being cool, but stop being engaging after a while. Yep. Because and it's been especially bad in season two because they oh have yeah been, with the yeah the, just well originally we gave them the benefit of the doubt of, because you know the footage didn't match yeah the um, like the monsters and the zords weren't matching up yeah it was um you know they they actually couldn't show more but even when that started lining up. When they started using Guy Ranger monsters, and uh, you know they actually would have had fight footage. There just wasn't any most of the time. Mm. But the problem is, even like even if they had the footage, like fifty episodes of a show where like a giant man in a robot costume fights <laughs> a giant man in a well, normal sized man, but they're scaled, right? Um, in a like rubber monster costume, like there's limited mobility there to begin with, and you know, only a, really a set number of things they can do. Yeah. So, like, just from a, an engagement standpoint, it starts to get very, it's done this scene that very quickly. Yeah, so, that's fair. What I wish they'd do is, and again, I realize the budget, they're not going to right. spend the money to do this, but I wish they would put more into the choreography of those fights and ramp up to it, like, make combining into the Megazord a big deal, like you were mentioning there. Yeah. Like, have them really explore the what they can do with each individual robot before yeah. moving to the big robot. Because, like, even the small robots, which are basically just either puppets or, like, manipulated models of toys, like, even they're pretty limited in what they can do. But you have five or six individual Zords that all have a few things they can do, and with that combination of things, you can get a lot of mileage out of that before it starts feeling sane. Yeah. You, oh man, this means I can't talk about too much Go Buster stuff because that's, that's that uh, that series has legitimately one of the best last Megazord fights. Ooh. Um, God, I, I really can't tell you because it, it, it's a actually a really good surprise. Okay. Because the whole deal is that, um, this is part of the spoiler, that basically the enemy by the end, the main villain, has been able to analyze all their tactics so much, he knows whatever, like, strategy they're gonna pull from their arsenal. Right, sure. So the actual last Metal fight is something they've just never done before. So that's almost appropriately meta of, like, you know, we've seen the, the show enough, we've seen these fights enough, we know, like, what your response to this is gonna be. Yeah. And, like, forcing it to, like, be creative and different for the audience through an actual in-universe. And the best thing is, 
it's not a bullshit. It literally is kind of a day as a machina, in a way, because it's a giant robot. Right. But it's literally a thing where you go, oh, that actually makes sense. Why did they never try that before? Like, that's actually, like, a good surprise tactic. Okay, cool. Like, there's even a good moment on the Red Ranger. It's just like, we don't need anything fancy. Just something he's never seen before. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. It needs to be a surprise and not necessarily something clever. Yeah, and, oh, that's... It's like, um, for Toki just <laughs> with the last Ranger fight, in the last mech fight in that is not a mech fight, it's the the giant imaginary rainbow train with all of their attachment cards on it. Right. Because the uh, the main enemy, like the main villains there, turn their giant dark shadow pals into a giant robot, cathedral robot. Right, I mean, I'm, I'm with you, that's all very sensible. And they're driving them flying through the sky and they just go, we're gonna beat the imagination and plow the train right, through the robot. Yep, yep. And they'll do the robot, they then go back up and come in for a second pass of ten dollars. Fantastic. Well, that, I mean, that makes sense, like, if you're gonna ram something and you are still functional after the first ram, keep it coming. There is, um... Yeah, there's basically a thing now in Sentai, which is, the last fight is never the actual Megas will fight, it's gonna be a good, like, ground fight scene. Right, you want something that's gonna be an actual memorable finale. Exactly, yeah. And yeah, that's, that's just the thing, due to the nature of... The combination of budget and the scale at which you're working. Yeah. Like, Zord fights just can't be as cool as you want giant robot versus monster fights to be on a like television show. It's the case where that's why honestly Ultraman is still the king of televised kaiju fights, just because it's a dude in a very flexible costume right, yeah. fighting big monsters. Right, exactly. Because like like that's the thing that actually keeps me coming back to Power Rangers at this point, is it's the like on the ground fights, like the putty fights alone in Power Rangers are remain one of the most compelling and like fun, like visual components of the series. Right. Yeah. And it's all it's all because the 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 participants involved are able to be very mobile. Yeah. And it's you know professional like martial artists. Yeah. Like getting to interact with one another and spar, like martial artists and dancers, etc. People with a lot of like um, choreography based training. Right. Yeah, that's... And you have to imagine, for like, in order for it to continue to be fun for them, they're constantly having to come up with new things to do. And that shows in how consistently engaging those sequences are. My favorite thing in Georgia, the animal sentai, is that how they actually express animal behavior in fighting. Oh, sure. So, like, the elephant ranger, who is literally an elephant guy, like, will make big upward strikes with his arm like that. Yep. And like make big stomps all the time. Right, yeah, very much like an elephant would fight. Yeah, like if they were a bipedal humanoid. Like, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I've actually been trying to get a friend of mine to watch um, to watch that one because uh, he's playing an RPG character who's an elephant man. Okay, yeah. And I was like, okay, that one of the characters is basically like exactly what that is. So, <laughs> like, you should definitely check that out. God, I, I love. That, that, ser that series is one that definitely has its own ups and downs, but it's just such a nice, well-made show. Also, that that series deals really well with depression and self-loathing for one character. Because, like, I've mentioned before to you guys that the Six Ranger is... What are you doing? <laughs> I, look, I have nothing to do with my hands, okay? <laughs> Fair, fair. Um, but yeah, that Six Ranger in that show is basically TWA's Tommy Oliver. Just because he's a lonely boy who wants to be friends. That's all he wants. I could have made, made a high five device. I could have made a really bad joke at that. Excellent. Oh god, Jesus. I'm getting the next question, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm still going to be playing it. I, I know. I don't need my hands to answer questions. I, um, well, we'll see. Joel, make a shadow <laughs> um, that's, that's not a question, that's a request. There's a difference. <laughs> it's a great question. Okay, fine. Joel, can you make a shadow puppet? If, can, if, if yes, please do so. Thank um, you. I mean, I can't really do it on camera. It would be hard to set up. But I mean, <laughs> I can kind of do a bunny. Who can't do a bunny? Who can't do a bunny? Seriously, I, I never, I never really got beyond that. I did try a lot, and like, especially at like 
summer camp or scouting. Oh, like, yeah. Expeditions and stuff where you're in a tent with nothing but a flashlight to amuse yourself. Exactly, yeah. All right, next question. Um, so this asked by at what is cosplay? What is cosplay? I want you to answer this one. Okay, well, I think the, um, the broad way definition of cosplay is wearing a Halloween costume on any day that's not Halloween. One interpretation, sure. Um, I mean, you can definitely get deeper into it depending on how much you care about, like, nerd culture or, like, cosplay as, a, like, a community. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think, I think there is... Like, on that level, like, if you want to care about it that much, you can definitely get into, um, like, definition by degrees of where there's a divide between just wearing a costume and actually cosplaying. Um, I think, I think on that level, like, if you're going to be, like, attending a con, for instance, like, if I just go to a con wearing my, like, Hero of Breath hoodie, I'm not doing a Homestuck cosplay. <laughs> um... If I make an entire like hero of time outfit, that might be cosplay. Sure. Um, the like I don't think there's a clear like clear necessarily line between there. It's definitely one of the more of those um, things where you know it when you see it, and mm-hmm. also it's you know a soft definition to some degree. Okay. Um, where you know um, if I say my outfit is a cosplay, I think that should be all that's needed to establish it as a cosplay. Sure, sure. Um, Cause like, I don't, I don't really specify like... You don't, wanna, of, you don't wanna get... Right, yeah, you don't wanna say there's a certain level of effort that's required. Cause sometimes people are very much into the like, play aspect of cosplay. Like, someone puts on red shades and assume they can, they can be Mac Metal. Right, yeah, exactly. Sometimes people are into a, like, really into that side of things, but lack the resources or, you know, whether it's time, money, etc., to actually put together good costumes. Yeah. And don't want to necessarily limit themselves to costumes that are inexpensive to put together. So if you just want to make uh, Metroid armor out of some cardboard and call that your cosplay, more power to you. That's awesome. That is the uh, best cosplay I've seen, which is still a dude in just cardboard boxes and it just sits on the front in choppy gun leather. Yeah, no, that's great. That's yeah. fantastic. Um, which I think that's I think that's where the delineation um, really lies is the combination of the words costume and play. Because um, anyone can just put on a costume and hang around and be themselves in a costume. Mm-hmm. Um, I think cosplay to some extent, and I, I'm going to stress to some extent for reasons I'll get into after this. Um, <laughs> Involves a certain amount of not necessarily that all was role play, but just representing the character that you are dressed up as. It's not just it's not just wearing a mask of somebody. It's actually trying to embody them to some degree. Um, some people take that way too far and insist on like either shoehorning their idea of the character into other people's experiences, which is and like. At the nicest level, incredibly rude. At the um, at a higher level, downright harassment sometimes, um, and can absolutely ruin somebody else's good time. Um, I think a very important rule of thumb to always follow when at a public event is, you know, you are allowed to have as much fun as you want, you want, so long as you aren't stepping on anyone else's toes or making anyone else uncomfortable in the process, um, unless they're uncomfortable by your mere presence, which is fine. Um, but at the same time, like, I think, um, I think as long as you're not going to the lengths of, say, you know, dressing up as somebody who's canonically, a, like, obnoxious asshole as an excuse to cover your being an obnoxious asshole in that space, like, I think there's a really fun element of, like, embodying the character you're dressed up as that really enhances cosplay beyond, like, just what a simple, like, you know, wearing a Halloween costume would. And, like, I think that's at the core of any good, like, like dress-up party or, like, Halloween party, too. Is people who aren't just wearing a cool costume, but are actually trying to, like, have fun getting into the headspace of the character they're playing as. Whether it's, you know, bantering with other people from the, you know, the same shared universe that your thing is from. Um, or just reacting to things in the 
persona of who you are playing rather than just as yourself. Yeah, that pretty much lines up with how I feel about cosplay a lot of the time. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah cosplay is pretty cool. It's not something I'm super into just because like I'm self conscious enough as it is. That's, <laughs> that's an extra. Like I know some people who are self conscious when cosplay is a nice like release. It's a good excuse to not be themselves and to feel comfortable like expressing themselves in ways they'd be a lot more you know self conscious about internally. That's not really on my particular like no, random yeah. anxiety manifests. Yeah. Um. I'm. I don't know. I even even for Halloween parties and stuff. Like I like dressing up, and I might like try to you know do some thematic stuff that goes with it. But I I can't play a character to that extent. I'm just not comfortable with that. That's fair. I mean, like if you were to cosplay anything, like let's say you were given the resources right now, uh, what would you cosplay as? Well, who would you cosplay as? I would say. Hmm. I mean, there's always the cop out of like picking one of any number of mysterious ninjas as an excuse to just not have to talk to people. Honestly, that's fine. Like, this, um, is, this is your preference. No, no, I know. I just, but I honestly do feel like that's kind of a cop out. Sure. Um, and ultimately, I think I'd be cheating myself out of some of the experience. Sure. Okay. Um, and I want to put myself in a situation where if I really do want to engage with something, I have to break the character. Yep. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm a big fan of. Um, I don't know, I'm a big fan of the um, style of dressing up as somebody who's fairly mundane, who can just slot into the actual, like, convention you're at as just an attendee, but right. you're still able to, you know, sort of play around with it. Yeah, of course. So, like, maybe one of the less fantastical X-Men or... Right. Uh, uh, yeah, the, what a, well, like, long shot. shot. No, <laughs> I just I just what the fuck am I thinking? Of course I would cosplay as Peter fucking Parker. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, not only is he my favorite superhero, but, like, like, it's just an excuse to, like, not try to clamp down on my natural inclination to joke around with all this stuff. So, basically, I can imagine you just, like, dress, probably a little, uh, different style, but also you have camera and, like, uh, daily kind of, like, press badge. Uh, daily bugle. Damn it, damn it, damn it. But yeah, um, <laughs> my, my vision of Peter Parker is more just a sweater vest kind of guy. I was about to say that, yeah. Um, which I'm definitely not, but I feel like I could pull it off for a Peter Parker look. Well, that's, that's part um, of the play. And also, um, having some sort of poorly concealed Spider-Man stuff on me. I think there should be a thing where, like, you're still wearing like, one of the or like, like well, you, ideally, what I would want to have, like, at the very least, a, like, Spider-Man patterned shirt underneath. So, like, if yeah. I... Get the opportunity to have any like interactions with the kid who wants to run dressed up as. And yeah, well, that's plenty of one, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, just I can imagine moments walking up to like a vendor and you're, you just before I put on an app like Spider Man glove, like, hey, can I get, I, could I get. Right, yeah, <laughs> <young, young. laughs> I think there's good opportunities for that. Right, yeah, exactly. I think so. Speaking of uh, putting his hands together makes a little spider symbol. Show up for the camera. I, that's gonna be hard because they don't actually spot show it for the camera. Okay, show the class what you did, Joel. It's a good one because it's a spider. We at the end of it, boy. That's a webcam we're using. We will do something with that more time. Something with like that. <laughs> um, actually, if you could get uh, like a a mouth and a tail for it, would be a uh, chest hugger. Or face huggers. Chest huggers. Huggers. Yeah, I, I somehow completed chest bursters and face huggers into one even more horrifying organism. No way they won't do this, please. Well, so, okay, well, be, so chest hugger is from the obvious of, other part would be the face burster. And <laughs> oh, oh, no! Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, that's bad. That would be bad. Now, before I wrap up a little bit, but I do want to just finish off this chest real quick. So I mean, the, be... the torso is literally the thing that's going to kind of hold all this together. Yeah, so, so I kind of need that. So, this is going to be a quick, speedy build. Uh, just mostly go to my dad's home. Luckily, he's going upstairs for the moment, so... Because <laughs> that was... Yeah, we don't, the, there was a we don't have the, we don't have the um, recording in progress studio light on. I do so. kind of want to just go... And special guests! <laughs> <laughs> From all, all the way from New Zealand, <laughs> my stepdad. <laughs> oh yeah, all the way from New Zealand. Yeah, he's the one who's traveled the furthest to be here, yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Who's really bad? Who's the plane? 
All right, we're getting there. I'd be very worried if we weren't. <laughs> yeah, like, hmm. Uh, 2018. So I know we just assembled a bunch of stuff, but counterintuitively, we've, we're actually like further, like we're further behind now than we were. What do you mean? I'm just saying, like we weren't making progress. Like, oh yeah, yeah. We, you know, we've assembled all this stuff, but we actually like we have more to go now than we did before we started. <laughs> a lot of mistakes can be made in Gunpla. Right. Well, at the very least, those things are fairly modular. With stuff like. Like, if you screw up an arm, you don't have to disassemble everything, you just pop the arm off and disassemble that piece. Right, yeah, that's true. Um, it's not like Lego Lego or like a 3D puzzle where oh, the last yeah. 3D puzzle I built, which was a, um, I don't remember what building it was, but it was one of those, like, um, Middle Eastern style palaces with the big bulbous, like, towers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so most of the pieces were just these, like, long, flat platform pieces, because I was basically building, a uh, um, and it was the base of it, so it was kind of an angle, like, base that I was building in layers. Yeah. And I got pretty much everything put together and realized I still have this one base piece left. Okay. And I was like, um, well, everything's holding together, so technically it's, you know, it's fine, but, like, this is clearly a problem. And, like, it actually took me a while to find, um, but yeah, there was a, one of the pieces that I just had left out, and there's this small gap in there that was it was all being held together by the other pieces the way they slotted in. Yeah. And the way things kind of overlapped, it was really easy to do that. Right. But like I ended up having to basically rebuild that puzzle twice because I had to <laughs> disassemble everything. And a lot of that stuff is with three D puzzles is designed so that like as you go, the pressure of everything you built is exactly. together, so you can't hold it together if you take stuff out. Right. Yeah. That was. A little demoralizing, but I was kind of doing the same thing you do with Gunpla, where like I, it was just kind of a, a thing to work through while I was watching. Yeah. <laughs> well, I find it's, it's hard to watch what I want to watch when I'm doing a Gunpla because you know I watch a lot of anime. Right. I know. Weird, right? Um, um the first time I'm hearing of this. Yeah, weird. Um, but it's hard to actually read subtitles when I'm reading instructions. Right. right. Yeah. See, that's. I mean, I'm the same way. I watch a lot of like LPs and um. I mean, yeah, just like YouTube videos um, in my leisure time. And there are LPs that are great for like watching or playing video games or building something or, you know, you know, while doing other activities, just have on kind of in the background because like the visual component is obviously a part of watching people play video games, but for a lot of games, it's just like... It's fun getting commentary. Right. Well, yeah, a lot of times it's a lot of the same sort of you know, actions, and like you can kind of follow what's happening without paying close attention at all times to the video. It's not as fun just watching a Let's Play of like someone who's played a game that you've already played, so you kind of don't need to Yeah, exactly. It. Or like a really story-driven game where like they're reading all the dialogue and exactly. like, yeah. everything is happening, you can follow. Um, that's literally me, like, that's why I that's why some watch Jojo's Jojo's Bazaar <laughs> Magic, yeah. Like, right, so like, there's, you know, LPs that are fine for that, but then there's stuff like, uh, you know, a Yakuza game where right. you can't multitask while watching somebody play Yakuza. Really? Uh, I mean, if you know Japanese, maybe, but even then, you're missing out on a lot of great visuals. Like, just not, not great, great, yeah, not great visuals from a like design standpoint. The, I mean, despite now being on PS4, like Yakuza Zero is still is using some of the animation rigs from PS2 days. Right. And it shows. Right. Adds so much charm. To right. It. Yeah. Exactly. There's some amazing, like, there's some amazing visual moments that come from that. And honestly, like, despite the like, the occasionally low res and low texture um, models and whatnot, um, the camera work in that game is very good. Like, there's some very well shot cutscenes. Yeah. Definitely. And like, even just like in engine like dialogue scenes, like. They, they make really good use of cutting to specific perspectives at certain times. Yeah, I'm, I appreciate games that have taken much more, like, purposeful directorial approach to their cutscenes and, like, stuff like Wolfenstein and you want to have some amazing moments. Right, that's probably the, like, it's probably the ideal of that. Yes. Yeah. Because, like, they basically, like, they basically treated the cutscene portions of that game as actual little movies. Exactly. Finish this one part. 
do do do. Just knowing everything that's going on in the background behind me. That's an important part of speaking something. <laughs> recording in this case. Exactly. We keep recurring just as a stream. We're so used to it. Like, well, I mean, I, I will refer to stuff that has never been streamed as a stream too, just because it's such a natural way to describe why the video is being taken. Well, it's also the case where, like, you know, we, we call people viewers sometimes, and it's just like, whoops, look, they're not viewers. Like, right. On, on podcast, definitely not. I mean, I guess they could be watching the waveform as they're listening, or like watching a visualizer. But it's also like, yeah, when people like Chief will say, you know, pizza party uh, on our on Twitch, uh, on Twitch channel, like, they're not watching it, but also, what else do you do on a Twitch stream? Like, I mean, yeah, it's just a Twitch audio stream, and I guess you can watch the static image that's up there. Yeah, it's just, it's always weird to me. Like, I don't know how to, like, contextualize that. Oh, man, we're going to this. Like, I'm trying to now analyze it, like, how does this build? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes going by visuals alone gets complicated. I'm also just like it's not dissimilar to building like a IKEA furniture. I'm also just like going real fast, which is maybe not ideal for this, but it's a is... good way to end up having to redo stuff. Oh, okay. Well, the visual never mind. Oh, thanks for that. Well, like almost. I was gonna say something else about it. But... Oh yeah. Um, do you think we'll ever get to the point where? Um, like voice recognition and like language recognition software is good enough that um, we can actually like live on the fly trans have a robot live on the fly transcribe audio. Ooh. And if so, how long do you think it'll take somebody to release a podcast app that automatically displays subtitles for the podcast? Oh, that's good actually. Because yeah, like being able to make podcasts more accessible to the hearing impaired would yeah. be amazing. Yeah, definitely. But also, do you really want math to be accessible to the hearing impaired? Well, and that's the other thing, is, like, given, like, I feel like it would be very difficult to get to that point. Yeah. Because the biggest thing that um, limits our current, like, computers understanding human speech thing is, like, colloquial speech, um, pronunciation, uh, yep. diction, articulation, that kind of stuff. And those are all, like... Huge components of a lot of podcasts are like, I mean, part of the reason everyone loves MacroWay products so much is because of the weird terms of phrase that they come up with and right. like um, the way they say things. And yeah. not only would that be hard to cap capture in text, that would be hard to for a like text parsing program to actually parse. Yeah, I can imagine that being a little difficult. And also, just on a technical side, I can imagine like you know. Uh, so an accent's not being treated with, uh, you know, the right amount right. of, like, well, that's, well, that's the thing, like, like, well, not just, not just even that, but just the, like, technical side of designing a program that's robust enough to handle all these different accents yep. and dialects and whatnot, because different people do say words differently, and, um, one of the, like, ever-going struggles for, like, the prevalence of like speech to text stuff in uh, digital assistants now mm -hmm. is getting them to understand people when regional dialects can so vastly change how the dictionary is going to line up. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we got the torso done, which means let's connect all of this together. So, but also the core fighter. All right, I'd make a Voltron reference here if I knew more about Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> got the torso done. So. For this part, we're going to connect core fighter first into the leg waist. There we are. Then we connect the torso core itself to the leg waist. <laughs> Man, I like that there's like a lot of detail in that core fighter because you know it sensibly will pop out and be its own thing. Right, and then it's almost completely covered up. Oh, of course, it's the whole thing. Yeah. Hold on, I don't want to accidentally like, really shove this into too hard. Right, you don't want to assume that it's lined up right and bust something because you... Right. Yeah. It's always the issue with like, putting on the torso sometimes, like, yep. you really don't have more. Yeah, you know you need force, and at some point you're going to have to put in that force, but you, if you don't do it right, you're going to screw it up. Oh, it's going to be so bad, Joel. It's going to be so bad if I screw this up. Um... 
It's, it's also not because it's impossible to actually look at it lining up. So you just gotta right. go completely by feel. I can't let me just shake something. Just really make sure. I think we can all relate to that. What? I mean, it's, it's hard to actually, you can't actually see it lining up. You have to go by feel. It's gonna pick up on camera me saying that, but just think about it. If, if you don't, if you don't know what I mean, just think about it a bit. Oh, oh I see. Okay, I missed a couple things. Okay. So, all right. And that is why you don't rush, and that is why you absolutely don't use a lot of force on parts until you're absolutely sure you're doing it right. This euphemism is just getting us in this. I'm not trying to do it that way. I know at this point you can't. But, hang on, I'm not trying to do it. Stop, oh god, Joe, stop! <laughs> Apparently I can't! Ooh, look out. Hey, 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 yeah. Um, I just want to look with my hands, okay, not my eyes. Well, now I need, I actually do need a pot. So okay, sorry. Yeah, like, <laughs> You actually need these parts. I actually do need that part, she says, and then sets it on the table and picks up a different part. Well, I didn't know which part you were playing with. Listen. Oh, she's getting worse! <laughs> she's getting worse! <laughs> well, at least this is all in video, so they, uh, they have the right context and can't misinterpret. Well, it would already be on video to some extent with me building it myself, but like... Yeah, but normally that video is focused on the table, not on you. That's true. So... So I had nickel the number of times I agree. It's getting worse, it's getting worse. Okay, so maybe in that case I'm going to put this in first. Well, stop that. Nippers. Uh, if you look out from the side, it looks like a beak. We just put some bird eyes on here, and it's like some sort of weird... God. Look, I told you, I need something to do with my hands. I listen! <laughs> I'm trying! And I have an extra set of hands to find something to do with now. <laughs> what we need to do is um, get a really thin wire to prop it up. Yeah. And then put it on a little like unbalanced like track. Oh, okay. So it can so it can be uh, cousin it or thing rather. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, please, please. No, co yeah, cousin it is the hairy guy. Yes. You know, I know yes. Adam's family. It's just something about being recorded that makes parts of your brain shut down and you say the wrong thing that you know are wrong. Yeah, exactly. Well, I know that feeling very well. What? Mm -hmm. I heard some primo Jules noises here, so clearly things must be going well. Okay, do I actually make those noises and locks? I can't tell. Oh yeah, no, that that particular um, mm -hmm. yeah, that one, and spe well, it's specifically the uh, mm, mm -hmm. uh, mm. like it's a, there's a specific pattern to it that is yeah. Now, to be to be fair, like it's most been most noticeable with what we talked about most stuff, and that comic is explicitly designed to elicit that reaction. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Heck yeah! Finally, our robot has a body. Oh right. We can, we can now call him Jesse if we so choose. <laughs> until now, he wasn't the body. What do you have against the former governor of Minnesota? I don't even know what joke you're making, like... No, Jesse the Body Ventura, he was arrested. Oh, yeah, Jesse Ventura. And then a uh, politician, because... And also an actor. Yeah. Well... Well, act... you know... He, he also appeared in films. Yeah, he also appeared in films, so that's the thing. What, you didn't love him in Predator? He was actually pretty decent in Predator. He was alright in Predator. It was a good use of him. Yes. 
I feel like that's something that um, we've gotten better at since the like eighties and nineties. Oh, but you still like stuntmen and like. Well, yeah, like getting people who aren't like traditionally like trained as actors but want to get involved in movies. Like, for instance, uh, Dave Bautista and yes, uh, Guardians right. films is just like a perfect use of it. Like they figured out exactly what he's good at doing and found a found a role for him that. Let him do that and have fun with it. Well, not to also underplay the fact that Batista actually like went to uh, classes beforehand because he really wanted that role. Right. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. But like, and like, yeah, and not to say that you need to be a classically trained actor in order to be good in movies. It's Especially just not anything else. Right. It's just it's just a thing that used to be a lot more prevalent in movies where somebody wanted to get somebody who didn't have a lot of film experience wanted to get into something, and rather than finding some a role that fit what they were comfortable with or able to do, they get shoehorned into something that wasn't yeah. a good fit. Joel, there's so much piping in, your, in this joint. <laughs> what happened to you, buddy? <laughs> I don't know. Also, like, can you imagine being in the emergency room <laughs> and, like, having that exact same conversation? Joel, there's, there's so much piping in this joint. So you're more cholesterol than man! Like... <laughs> This is the, this is the whole thing. Like as you've seen, this is Simpsons reactive die. We inject you into a whole bloodstream. We'll show us what's going on. But Doctor, I've injected the, the, the die yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Homer. I'm going to just uh, perform a simple fat test. I'm going to jiggle your fat and time until it stops. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Look at that flubber fly. Yes. No, let's get to my three o'clock. <laughs> There we go. That's a much more stable way. Uh, I think the shut up. Up. just fell off. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. That's fine. Shut up. That is also the classic sort of thing. Just shut up. Oh, we've got most of a robot here. Yeah, I mean, granted, we still have a day's worth of shields to assemble, but... So we still got the head, the armor, the backpack, shields, and weapons. This thing's not being completed before you go, I'm sorry to say. I'm kind of worried you're right, yeah. Like, we'll see when we'll get more time to shoot, but uh, I don't know. I'm always happy that we got the bulk of, like, the frame done. We got a lot of the, like, we, we got the arms and the legs into the most obvious, like, symmetrical, like, work on this together pieces. So basically, well, we've just got to get the symmetrical armor pieces done. Yep. Uh, backpack. We've got at least four shields, so two shields to work on each. Sure. Plus the weapons we can split up. Yep. We can we we can rope in Tyler as you know, <laughs> Tyler can work on the head while we're doing that. Oh, I'm not trusting with the head. The head's really good. He broke the head on the last couple. Oh yeah, never mind. He's not <laughs> He's near the head. No, actually, you know what? No, I don't need cheap labor from. <laughs> <laughs> we're not outsourcing any of this. Come on. <laughs> That's also the Queenslanders. What are we thinking? Anyway, so thank you for joining us, everyone. This has been Julie makes a grade. I've been Julie. I've been Joel. And we've been making the grade. <laughs> I didn't know we were having to pose. I listen. I didn't either, and I was like, "We're doing this, I guess." <laughs>